name is Larry Sinas and welcome to Is Your Business For Real? This is a show in which we help new or struggling business owner with their business. As we explore their new or struggling business, we will give them practical business ideas, tips, and ways to improve their bottom line. We also help them determine, well, if their business is for real, or if they should start to rethink the idea of their entire business. However, today's show is a little bit different than the previous shows. In this show, I have volunteered to be the guest business owner and discuss my newest venture, Mall Stars Video Production Studios. Mall Stars Video Production Studios is a new company that is unlike anything out there. Mall Stars is a green screen production studio located in a mall. Our plans are to grow over 100 stores nationwide with possible plans to franchise. Because of the popularity of video and the need for good quality video at an affordable price, we believe the time is right for a business like this. Of course, as any new business, we have our struggles and we need to find out new business consistently. So here today with me as our guest experts is Bryn Tillman and Lisa Peskin of Business Development University. Tell you a little bit about Business Development University. It's a results-driven sales training and coaching company. BDU offers a comprehensive approach to sales and business development by creating customized solutions for business owners and sales management to help their teams grow. BDU trains clients on crucial skills including prospecting, investigating client needs, overcoming objections, and presentation skills, ultimately helping them close more business. Everything they teach is purposeful, practical, and focused on implementing activities and skills that will have a significant impact on the success of the organization. On my left is Lisa Peskin, and Lisa Peskin is BDU's CEO, I'm sorry, and she has more than 20 years experience in sales performance and management. Throughout her career, she has developed an award-winning reputation as a motivational and results-oriented sales professional. Under her engaging leadership, Lisa helps businesses and individuals drive sales revenues and help business owners to staff and cultivate top performers in a dynamic team selling environment. Through sales training, just-in-time support, and her succession planning, her programs center on cultivating talent and demonstrating the ROI impact that sales can have on a company's bottom line. On my right side, is Bryn Tillman, and she's the president and COO of BDU, and she has over 20 years in business development, script and process development, and sales training. She's a natural networker whose passion is connecting businesses to help grow local commerce. Her primary focus is coaching for sales team, non-selling professionals who are responsible for client acquisition, and small business owners to help them develop their sales and networking plan, strategies, implementation, and measuring process. Through the BDU programs, Bryn helps clients reach their short and long-term goals. Today, I'm gonna to take off my jacket and I'm gonna be, and I'm gonna put on my Mall Stars badge while I listen to the great advice from the two brilliant women in the business development as we determine, is my business for real? Well, welcome Bryn. Hi, Larry. And welcome Lisa. Thank you very and much. And first, I've gotta take off the jacket. Boy, this is gonna be scary for me. <laughs> and I gotta put on the badge, and here I am as the owner of Mall Stars, and <laughs> boy, am I nervous. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll be kind to you, Larry. I've heard you guys beat people up. Uh, not on a consistent basis. All right. So, what do you guys need from me to determine whether, uh, first of all, whether my business is real and how I can increase my business? So, Larry, the key thing is before we figure out what you're supposed to do on a go forward basis, we have to do a little investigating as far as where you were before. Okay. Okay, and what's been happening with your business so we could figure out the best game plan on a go forward basis. So, we'd like to spend a little time with you today finding out as much as we can about what you've done so far so we could figure out the best game plan on a go forward basis. Is that okay? Absolutely, sure. Okay, so if you can, why don't you start off and tell us little bit about who your target market is mm -hmm. and who you're really trying to get to come into Mall Stars and tell us a little bit about your biggest deals and your average sales. So it, it was interesting. When we started Mall Stars, we, we thought that, the, that we really thought there was going to be a big personal market. We thought the idea with American Idol and um, you know and, and the Voice and all these TV shows, we thought we'd have a flood of people coming in here to, to to record things like karaoke and stuff like that. And I actually I actually thought um, that that was going to be the core business, believe it or not. And I thought the business to business business wait it was hard to say the business to business business was going to be the gravy. It's completely the opposite. It turns out the business to business business is the meat and the people coming in and doing the karaoke and that kind of thing is really the gravy. 
Still a lot of fun, but still the gravy. And and absolutely, positively, the most money we're getting and the most money we're making are from are, are from businesses. Okay, so if you could tell us a little bit about your net new business that you've had in your last six months. You said a majority of it is businesses. Where are they coming from? Is it mall traffic or is there some other outbound marketing campaigns or business development campaigns that you're doing to get those people in the door? I have to say most of it is from networking. You know, if I show up at a networking event, I meet a few people, they come after me afterwards and they say, oh, wow, I can't believe you guys are doing this, something like this, you know, how much is a video? And when I give them the price, like, wow, that's fantastic. I, you know, couldn't find some, somebody else, somebody who did it for that price. So yeah, so, so networking events is, is the number one. Number two is mall traffic. And we really did pick up a lot of good business from mall traffic. Okay, so let's talk about your networking events. Um, how many um, groups are you a part of and what is your networking game plan right now? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I actually was thinking about this this morning because I came from a networking event this morning, of course, right? And and, I, and part of the problem is I, I'm stuck here. You know, I, you know, as a new business owner, I've only got so much money to be able to afford so much payroll. And so a lot of times I'm here replacing the people who really should be doing what they're doing and I should be out doing what I'm doing. You know, that's an obvious problem. However, um, you know, I try to get to as many networks as possible. But, I, but what was funny was the reason I, I was thinking about something this morning, I was thinking about how when I originally wrote the business plan from All Stars, I actually wrote that the manager of each store has to attend a minimum of four networking events per week. Okay. And it was funny because I actually realized that this week I attended four events. Good. So I finally reached the goal that I set my managers to, 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 to reach. And so no, in other words, I wasn't even doing what I knew I was supposed to do six months ago before I opened. Well, you just mentioned something really key, because what you did is you took the networking and you developed a SMART goal out of it. It was specific, it was measurable, it was aligned with your company's goals, it was realistic and you had a time frame around it. So you want to visit four networking events on a weekly basis. Right. That's your activity goal. What's your goal as far as the results of those four events? Oh wow, I never even gave that a thought. Okay. That's, that's interesting. I, I, you know. My my natural thought was, you know, meet as many people as possible and let and let the business come to me. But clearly, now that you've asked the question, I realize that that's not a good answer. <laughs> well, uh, you're not alone, Larry. A lot of people set themselves good game plans, and it focuses on what activities that they right. should be doing. But with any good game plan, you need activities and results. So for every activity that you want to do, you want to be purposeful and understand exactly what results you're looking to get out of that. So if I'm going to go to a networking event, what do I want to get out of that networking event? Do I want to pick up 25 cards or do I want to set two qualified appointments with potential prospects, suspects, or strategic alliances? And are you clear as far as what the difference is between the suspect, prospect, and strategic alliance? Tell you what, I'm gonna say that I'm clear, but I'm smart enough to say that I'd, I'd rather you describe it. <laughs> okay, a suspect is someone that fits your profile, but you're not sure whether or not they have a need or not. Okay. Okay, a prospect down, is somebody that fits your profile, right. has a need, and understands when they're talking to you that you are somebody that might be able to help them with that particular need. Then there are referral sources. We're a great referral source for you. We're out there all the time talking to companies about how to market their business better, the importance of videos. So we send a lot of right. people your way. We're a great referral source. Mm -hmm. Then there's a strategic alliance. A strategic alliance might be a marketing company that wants to develop websites, but they want a video component of their website. So that's someone that you might go into business with um, and form a strategic alliance. So there's suspects, prospects, referral sources, or strategic alliances. Cool. When you're going to a networking event, you can meet any one of those four. Right. The chances are you're going to meet more referral sources and strategic alliances than you are suspects or prospects at the networking events that you go to. So you want to make sure that you walk in there saying, all right, what am I looking to get out of this? Hmm. Is it just 25 more cards to add to your database? That might be a goal that you want to put out there. And those people could also go, you could link into them. And by the way, we've written a book on <laughs> how 
how to use LinkedIn for business development. And this is something that so many people are on LinkedIn now, and they haven't a clue how to use that tool to drive their business. And my partner, Bryn, has become a guru on how to use social media networking to drive the business. But in your daily activities and in your networking, you have to work in conjunction with your social networking to be able to maximize the opportunities that you have out of the events. So, and if I could add, actually, when you are meeting those strategic uh, alliances and referral sources, If you schedule one-on-one with them, typically you meet with them for coffee, you have some niceties, you learn a little bit about each other's business, and then you say, do you know of anyone that can use my services? And they kind of scratch their head and say, I can't think of anyone right now, but I really like you, and if something comes up, Sure. And that's a good two hours of your time, getting right, right, there, right. getting back, right? right? And now, my time is very valuable. It's very yeah. valuable, right? right? So using LinkedIn with these strategic alliances and referral sources, you can set a goal ahead of time. Please feel free before we meet, look through my LinkedIn connections, write down five or six people that would make a good introduction for you. I'll do the same and we can review them. Now when you sit down and you review them, maybe two people that they give you, you say, I don't know them well, but these four, I'll be happy to make those introductions and vice versa. So now you walk away with two af- af- a two hour investment of your time, could be four or five warm introductions and it becomes productive. So, all right, so now what I'm doing, actually to answer your question, okay, I do, I take the business cards when I get them because some places they won't even, they don't even give them to you or you know, some people don't even bring business cards to a networking event, which it's a whole other story, but I at least get the ones I have. So let's say I get the 25 business cards. I know at least I've scanned them into my computer. I put them into an Excel spreadsheet. I put them into my contact database. And, I, and immediately, especially if it's the first time I'm at that event, I, I send them a video email. That's the first thing I do. Um, so I at least know to contact them. And I got to admit, I mean, I'm a big proponent of, you know, drip emails and drip and, and, and autoresponders, and I have not created them all yet. Okay. And, you know, so at least, you know, it's funny, at least I know I, I haven't. But, so that's the first thing I do, and I gotta admit that I've done nothing else after that. I'm getting from you, the second thing I should do is connect to each one or, or try to find them on LinkedIn, is that right? Correct. Okay, mm-hmm. and, then, and then from here, I mean, you're, you know, if I have 25, I can't, there's no way I can meet with 25 of them, even if I had every, every possible day. And, and Which you, ones should, I, should so, I meet with? So I recommend that you put them in three piles when you get back. Okay. We recommend. So um, you have a suspect pile, a prospect pile, okay. and then a strategic referral source or alliance. You can okay. even have that fourth the, pile if you'd fourth, like. Okay, so the third pile is kind of a combination of the both of you. Okay. Right. So All we right. have different goals for them. The suspects, you might just drip on. Okay. The prospects, you're going to reach out and try and get appointments with. They have an immediate so, need right. or a need or they found in some interest in what you talked about. So from a sales perspective, that's who you contact and make a, a typical appointment. Your strategic alliances, especially when you have a place like this, I'd invite them in here rather than even go out for coffee because you have a great studio and you want to show that off a little bit. So invite them in, pick up some Starbucks, and, right. and you know, have them see the facilities and give them a little bit of tour. Actually, I invite them in a group or should I invite one at a time? Well, it, I, as a strategic alliance, I'd invite one at a time. Okay. And, and you can talk to them in advance and say, you know, what are you hoping to get out of this hour or two? Uh, and if their hope is to get uh, referrals and introductions, then going a LinkedIn route might be a great way to go. Uh, just coming up with lists of who you want to meet and making those introductions makes those strategic referral opportunities Uh, really productive. So to piggyback on what Bryn said, creating systems is really critical. And Bryn just gave you an example of a system to group them that way. Another way to do it is to um, outsource your LinkedIn follow-up. We're big believers in time management. There's only so much time that Larry has during the week to focus on business development. So you got to make sure that time is used in the most productive way. So one system that I use when I come back from a networking event, I write ones, twos, and threes on the back of my cards, and I give them to my administrator. My ones is just add them to the database, link in, and that's it. My twos, Mm -hmm. I want to set up a phone meeting with them. My threes, I want to set up a face-to-face meeting with them. 
And so you might want to figure out what system is going to work best. But if you are finding that a big bulk of your business is coming from the networking, then you want to have a game plan around your networking. Absolutely. And you want to be very selective in the groups that you're going to. So I was just meeting with a client prior to coming over here, and he's specifically going after web designers. So does it make sense for him to be in a networking group that is all different types of backgrounds or does it make sense for him to focus on a very specific group? Okay. So I'd like you to, if you're going to spend at least four hours a week for four networking events, and typically it's you're probably, talking yeah, it's probably eight more hours. like yeah, eight right, hours, right. that's a good investment of your time. So sure. you want to be make you want to make sure that these are the best groups for you, and that sure. they are providing you your ROI. So you need a game plan. So speaking of game plans. Do you have a written game plan around your business development? You mentioned you have no. a, a, a business right. plan, but you really need to come up and formulate a business development game plan. And for anybody out there that is really looking to drive their business, so many salespeople and business people and business owners, they wing it every day. They check their voicemail, they check their email, they see the couple appointments on their schedule, and from there, they're just winging it. You need to make sure that you've got a very particular plan. So when you first started this business, in order to get any funding from the bank, you need to put together a well-detailed game plan, correct? Well, yeah, fortunately for me, I didn't go to a bank. But but I but I, I guess to convince my wife that it was a good act. <laughs> <laughs> that might have even been a more powerful business plan right. that you would need to convince your wife. So here we are. And how many hours? You said you're working pretty long hours. Oh, absolutely. A, a, a short day for me is 12 hours. How many hours are spent on business development a week? Approximately. Uh, you, you know, if you if you include the eight hours of networking. Yes. Nine. Nine hours a week. If you include one the eight hour. hours, yeah, in other words, very little. Okay, so fine. Right. So if we're dealing with nine hours, we're dealing with 560 minutes of networking time. If I said to you, I'm going to give you $560 this week, and if you don't spend it, you lose it, how much are you spending this week? 561 And how about next week? Five hundred sixty. And yes. 20 weeks down the road, the same thing. The thing with time... It's the same thing. Sure. Once you don't use it, you lose it. So we've got to make sure that you've got a really well-defined game plan. And that was that would be something that we do. We sit down with all of our clients. We analyze what the business has been and come up with a very specific game plan, almost like a recipe for success, that you could figure out exactly what you need to do in order to target the market that you want to come in. Okay, now you mentioned that a lot of your business is coming from networking, but more of your business is businesses as opposed to individuals. Correct. So if I'm to ask you, Larry, what is your ideal business client, what would you say? My ideal business client, honestly, would be someone who is, uh, understands the web presence. And web presence now is very different than it was five years ago. Web presence now is... You need to make a video today, you need to make a video next week or next month, you need to make another video and another video and another video because you realize that what's happening is you've got to get your message out, you've got to get your message out differently than it used to be. It's no, people aren't reading your message anymore. They're hearing you tell the message. So the ideal business client to me is someone who totally understands that I have to explain it to them because I'm still having, you know, I'm still selling that concept to some people who don't get it yet. Okay. I still haven't been able so far. Okay to really think of who I could introduce you to yet. So now we want to get a little bit more specific. So for instance, if I said to you, do you know of anybody that needs sales training? Huge set of people. Can't really think of anybody, okay? Now if I said to you, do you know of anybody with blonde hair, hazel eyes, glasses, that's very tall for their height? You might think about me. I'm thinking about my mother. Okay, well, yeah, you might was, be your no, mother. No, no, I'm, I'm kidding. But you really <laughs> want to hone down, hone in on exactly who you're going after. So something <laughs> like, I would like to find companies with anywhere from five million right. to fifteen million in revenue that are either technology companies, professional services, 
or retail stores. I'm just making something up. So you're so what you're what you're telling me to do is, is really think about what my target market is. I want you to think about your target market and I want you to get as specific as possible. Because the more specific you get, the easier it's going to be for people like ourselves to figure out who to make introductions make to right. on your behalf. And you can actually change that up. Just because you're going specific IT one at one networking meeting, you can go specific SaaS solution at another mm -hmm. or retail at another. So it's not that um, it's your only target market. But when people make referrals, it's, you know, it's hard for us to understand other people's businesses. We're focused on our own. Sure. But if you actually specifically said, do you know any graphic designers? I'd say, absolutely. I can go through the graphic designers I know and make those introductions. Right. So it's about um, stirring up in my mind as a networking partner who I can introduce to you. You know, I find it, it's funny, I find it easier to find who the strategic alliance people are. But I, I'm having, and it's, it's, I know a prospect when they walk in the door. Mm -hmm. But I find it difficult to explain who a prospect is to you. And that's what, and that's part of my problem. So yeah, so for I, other people, right? So in other words, for me to tell you what my ideal client is, mm -hmm. it's difficult to to explain it. And, and I'm wondering if I have the same problem as anyone else, or if it's just me. Well, I, I think if you can narrow it down, and part of what we can do is help you come up with right. how to say that and how to ask for that. But when you get that message down, and certainly, I mean, there's a lot of different messages that you can use at different times. It will make that referral process much, much broader. Makes sense, sure. Right. So if you said, you know, I, a strategic alliance, I think for you that would be great is a, a web designer, someone right, that's absolutely. making websites, right? right? Because they're going to want to add video for their clients. Right. So if you were at a networking meeting and you said, I would love to meet any web designer that you know, everyone in that room knows at least one web designer. So I think you'll get a lot more referrals from that than any other thing that you might do. So then when I say to you, Brandon, mm -hmm. you know, a perfect process, prospect for me is someone who has a website. Is that? That's too general. Way too broad, right? It's way okay. too broad. But you may say to me, uh, you know, a perfect prospect for me is um, someone that's looking to grow their business um, and is putting some money into advertising. But I still may not know that. Sure. I may know that if they're my client, but I may not know who of my networking partners are are actually doing that. Um, but it, you know, you can you can come up with trigger words. So if you happen to be out networking and you hear someone say, you know, I'm really starting to invest in my website, that would be a great introduction for me. So if you come up with some trigger words that you offer some of your networking and referral partners, that can help as well. The other, the other people that might be great for you are social media consultants mm -hmm. because yeah. they're looking to get the blogs out, they're looking to get the videos out, they're looking to have the LinkedIn presence, the Facebook presence. So those are great strategic alliances for you. We've got a gentleman in the Philadelphia area and he specializes in nonprofits. I've probably given this one gentleman over 20 referrals because he honed in so specifically mm. that any time I hear somebody is looking for nonprofits, I'm like, you've got to meet this gentleman. So mm. you want to get it so they have automatic triggers, oh, this would be a great introduction for Larry. So you want mm. to get to that. One of the things that you could do to help hone in on your ideal clients, analyze your past clients. Analyze your existing client base, take a look at the size businesses, the person that was your decision maker, as well as the vertical market. Just by doing that analysis, you're going to be able to see your top three to five vertical markets that you're in, what the key decision maker is within each of those vertical hmm. markets, and you're going to be able to get an idea of the size company. Because then when you're going after companies, you'll say, well, I do a lot of work with companies like Business Development University and XYZ Company. And we've been able to help them, blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. I'd love to have an opportunity to come in and talk to you and see if we might be able to help you out as well. That's, that's, that's actually very, it's got the gears turning. Exactly. Absolutely. Throwing out the stories, being able to reference similar clients, mm -hmm is so valuable in getting and building credibility and getting those first appointments. The key so, thing, go ahead. So, you know, it's funny, I, 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 well, I could see how 
you know, like, and you guys can see it too. We, you know, we got the director giving us uh, the 25 minute sign, and I'm sitting here going, but I don't want to stop. Because <laughs> <laughs> you guys are doing, you guys are like absolutely amazing me. I mean, in a half an hour, the, the gears are definitely turning. I mean, you know, I, I'm lucky enough to know you guys personally and be able to get a, get a lot more out of this. Outside the half hour, <laughs> but but you know obviously the the, the audience should should get some of this too, and uh, you know you know and we got we've got about five minutes left. You know what would you? I mean I know you guys have been talking to me offline. I appreciate that, but let's get let's get a five minute message out to to the audience of something they could do right away. Obviously something I should be doing too, but something they could be doing right away to start building their business. Well, uh, the first thing uh, is go after client referrals. Your best referrals come from your clients. True. So if you go back to everyone you've done business with over the last however long you, you've been open and say, who else do you know that you might be able to um, recommend? And again, that may be a conversation where they scratch their head and they're not sure. So that's another good opportunity to go into LinkedIn, connect with your clients on LinkedIn, look through their, their connections, pull out some names and, and say them. You like the videos we did for you? And they'll say, Larry, we love the videos we did for you, that you did for us. I say, great, well, you know, I noticed when we connected on LinkedIn, you're connected to five people that make great introductions for me. Would you mind helping me out with that? And when you have a happy client, they're happy to refer you. So that would be one major piece of advice that I'd give. And the second I would give for any of you out there, as well as you, Larry, the key thing is, is we gotta have the game plan. So you gotta analyze where you've been before. You need to put together a well-defined 30, 60, 90 day game plan that not only has your activity goals, but your results goals. And then the other key thing is you've gotta find somebody other than yourself to hold you accountable. Because it doesn't make sense to set any goals, especially if they're measurable goals, if nobody's bothering to measure it. So you need to make sure that you've got a game plan, that you're gonna constantly be reviewing your success on the game plan, having some outside help that's gonna be able to help you drive to a different level, and make sure that you're filling your pipeline on a consistent basis and have a good process. So once you've got a suspect or prospect sitting in front of you, you've got a good process to go through so you can maximize your opportunities to close the business. Pretty cool. Well. Here's a story, everybody. Some people were afraid to come on the show because they thought that it was gonna be difficult to be in the hot seat. So I'm gonna tell you, yes, it's very difficult to be in the hot seat, but I'm gonna tell you something else. In this half an hour, I learned more about how to build my business than the last six months I've been open. So if you're smart, you'll volunteer to be a guest on this show and you'll leave here very nervous like I am, but very happy you're on this show. And at the end of the show, we usually say, is your business for real? I usually answer it but I have to let you guys answer because it, it wouldn't be fair if I answered my own question. But do you think my business is for real? Absolutely. This is Thank you. Give me a yeah. thumbs up. Thumbs up. This is, I think this is a brilliant business and I can't wait to watch it grow to your 100 plus mall sites. I, I'm, I'm excited about it. And actually, you know, I, I, it's clear that you guys are going to be a part of helping us grow. And I'm pretty excited about that too. And how can they reach you guys if they want to uh, use you guys as well? Uh, well, you can visit uh, www.businessdevelopmentuniversity.com or 877-310-1370. And, uh, but check us out on the website. Lots of videos that we did right here are right on our homepage. Thank you. Thanks everybody.